I already tested literally hundreds of these OBD apps and this one was the best by far. It worked for both Android and iOS and it also has some functions that are missing in three $400 scan tools. For example, it can unlock hidden features for your vehicle. For this Toyota, it was able to unlock opening windows from Keyfob. To use any OBD2 app, you will need a Bluetooth OBD adapter. These two are my favorites. OBD Link, definitely best ELM327 adapter. It's not that cheap, but if you are looking to unlock hidden functions, the fast and secure adapter like OBD Link will prevent any damages you could possibly done to your control modules. But I understand that not everyone wants to pay that kind of money for ELM adapter. And for you, I recommend VPIC. I have been using it for over a year and I didn't have any issues with it, even though it cost like under $20. I will link them in the description, OBD link VPIC and also VPIC version for iPhones. Now let me plug in my adapter and I will show you everything that car scanner app can do. Okay, I have my app opened. Even if you don't have adapter yet, what you can do, you can download this app and you can go to this demo and you will get in demo version of the app so you can try it even without being connected to vehicle. For example, see how it is displaying live data. Check this out, you can look at four different graphs at once. Basically, try every of the function in the demo mode. But I want to connect to my vehicle, so I go to this connect. It already found my OBD link adapter. And I am already connected. The bottom I can see the car OBD2 protocols. There are five main protocols. This is Canvas, VNumber and a bunch of other stuff. And if you cannot connect, you need to go to these settings and select your adapter here, device name. Here you need to select correct adapter that you are connected with. For example, this OBD2 is VPIG I had previously connected, so you need to select the right adapter. Now I am connected with OBD link. So if I had any issues with connecting, I have to go here and select OBD link. But usually you don't have any issues unless you have bad adapter. If you have trouble with your adapter, just buy the OBD link or VPIG and you will not have any troubles with connecting. Now this app really amazed me every time I use it because it is so complex. Now we are only in the settings. You can change units, so if you are in Europe like me, you want to select kilometers per hour, liters per hundred kilometers, temperature Celsius, you get the idea. If you are in USA, you will probably want to work with Imperial system. Now what is also cool is this terminal. When you go here, you can give commands to your ELM adapter. For example, when I type in the ATE, it will pull out the version of my adapter. So the OBD link is version 1.4B. I give you a link in the description for my ELM327 adapter blog article and there are those versions explained in more details in case you want to read more about your adapter version. Okay, now let's go to the main page. The most used function of OBD2 scanners is reading travel codes. What is great about this app, if you download any OBD2 app for free, I can guarantee you that it will be able to read only engine codes. The car scanner is only app that is for free and can read you the codes from all control modules. So for example, this Toyota have 33 control modules. With basic OBD apps, you are able to read only data from engine control module. It's amazing that app like this for free or $5 for a premium version can read you all fault codes. Now what is kind of annoying is that it cannot find out which control modules are in my unit. So if I want to scan all 33 control modules, I need to select all. Which which means around 130 control modules that this app knows. And if I go to read, yes, 131 control modules are stored in this app. But I don't have all of them in my vehicle. So it has to go through all 130 of them and either pull out the codes or decide that I don't have that control module in my vehicle and move to another one. So this scan will take up a long time, probably like four or five minutes. I will go ahead and cancel it. And already it was able to find me some archive codes this says archive codes, this means historical codes that are not present in my vehicle anymore, but they are still stored in the ECU memory. Again, it's great app because it can read me those historical codes, even though when I plug in my code reader, it isn't able to find any codes. 
I could also clear them if I want to. I don't want to do that right now. Next, if you have old codes, you also can read your freeze frame data. Now, I don't think there is freeze frame data for historical codes, but if you have some current codes that are present in your vehicle, you can read freeze frame, what was the RPM, what was engine speed, what was the engine data, exactly in that time when the code was stored in the engine control module, which will also give you an idea in what condition is fault happening. One of the most important features for diagnosing engine faults is live data. And also, I have to repeat myself, it's amazing how good is this app for displaying live data. To select live data, you have either separate or combined mode. If I go to combined mode, I can select unlimited amount of vehicle live data, press OK, and I will have them displayed in one graph. See, if I press the gas pedal, the data will start to change. Not only that most apps won't be able to display these graphs, what I can also do is flip my phone and press this list to hide list and I can look even in the bigger scale. But that is not even the best part. When I go back, live data again, and I select the separate mode, it will actually let me to look at four different live data graphs at once. You can select what you want to look at, for example, mother flow rate, short term fuel trim, engine RPM, and let's say the throttle position. So now I am able to look at four different live data at once, each in separate graph, so I can get kind of better idea about what is going on with each value. Again, when I press on the gas pedal, values start to change. And I can also flip my phone to get pretty big display with four different live data graphs at once. What you can also do with live data, use this data recording. If you want to look at some live data and how they behave during the drive, if you are doing it alone, you probably don't want to look at your display when you are driving. So the best thing you can do is record data. And if you select this option, it will be recording automatically. I already have it selected, so we can look at some of my previous recordings. Okay, here is the recorded file. All of these data are recorded. I can, for example, select barometric pressure, engine RPM, mass airflow, fuel trim, either on one chart, separate charts, or map plus chart. See, it can even record your location, but let me show you on separate charts. And now I can look at my data recording from that drive. And since we are already talking about this data, here is also the dashboard option, which most OBD apps have, where you can create your custom dashboard. So this is fully customizable. You can select which data you want to look at. Okay, let me show you. We can build our custom page. Add page. We can choose the layout. Let's say eight different values and put engine RPM. And now I can even select out of all these options, I can show them, I can display them in text. Let's try RPM in text. Or now let me do RPM in gauge indicator, engine coolant temperature that we can do in text, vehicle speed. Let's try another gauge, throttle position, gauge, oxygen sensor, line. I don't even know what that means. Mass airflow. We can try it. the chart indicator, timing advance. Let's select text, short term fuel trim, long term fuel trim, gauge indicator 2. Okay. I'll already have eight of items selected, press OK, and it will build me my custom page. Let me press the gas pedal. See, the values are changing. I can also turn my phone to have bigger display. And what you can also do is use this mirror button, which will mirror this whole screen. It won't work in daytime, but in nights, you could put your phone on the dashboard to create me the head-up display on my windshield. And on some cars you can even display those data at your car's radio. By the way, you might be wondering if you can use this app without internet connection and answer is you can. I will now turn on my airplane mode, but turn on Bluetooth so I can be connected with adapter and the app is still working without any troubles. Okay, now what other functions we have here? First, we have these emission tests. These are called readiness monitors in scan tools. You may be heard of them already. Your car does have several monitors. They are checking the health of your emission and exhaust related systems. The most important ones are misfire fuel system and components. Components means engine sensors. And your ECU tests the systems almost all the time. And then these other monitors are t being tested maybe once per a drive. But as you can see, all of my monitors are passed and that is good indicator that if I take my vehicle to state emission inspection now I will be able to pass even without hiding a hundred dollar bill in my glove box <laughs> not that I would ever do something like that
If you see not passed, you are probably having some issue with the remission system and you will be not able to pass. Or you just recently deleted fault codes. If you delete fault codes, all of these monitors will be not passed until ECU have a chance to run them again. Next we have these extra features like statistics. If you want, you can use this up long term to monitor statistics like average speed and fuel consumption. But you will have to have your adapter plugged in at all times. I'm not sure about VPIC, but OBD Link have sleep function that means you can have it plugged in all the time i had my obd link plugged inside this vehicle for months and it never drained my battery but be careful because if your adapter don't have sleep function you don't want to have it connected all the time unless you are driving your vehicle every day so the battery always have a chance to recharge can also do acceleration test if i go to add test i can either make my own acceleration test but also break time break distance or my quarter mile then we also can look at all sensors which are basically engine life data but you have them in text format not in the graphs then we have these non-continuous monitors these are the sensors that determines if your readiness monitors, which I showed you earlier, will have passed or not passed status. And this app will also tell you what are those minimum and maximum allowed data. Another cool feature is this ECU identifiers. For example, let's select engine control modules and it will give me a bunch of data regarding my engine control module. For example, what we have here is ignition counter or total engine runtime in seconds. I can imagine this being used even to verify real mileage of your vehicle. If I take my total engine runtime and if I am able to find average speed somewhere in the car, I theoretically could be able to confirm at least approximately if the mileage is real. So also very useful feature. And then last but definitely not least, coding and service. ECU coding or unlocking hidden features. This still shocks me that you have feature like this in $5 OBD app. And now I'm not sure, but it might even be part of free version. Don't know for sure, but even then, if you pay $5, like who cares, you don't have feature like this in simple scan tools. And not just simple scan tools, like there are two, three, four, even $500 scan tools that won't be able to do this ECU coding. For example, check the options for this Toyota. Let me open coding. It gives me this warning that function is in experimental mode. Once again, if you don't want to risk anything and you want to code new stuff for a vehicle, use OBD Link adapter. The worst thing that can happen is when you are doing decoding and when decoding is being saved in your control module and your adapter disconnects. That can result in breaking your control modules, which would require taking your vehicle to the dealer and that would be be repair for a few hundred dollars or euro. Now I used coding with also with VP adapter, never had any issues. But if you want to be safe, use OBD link for coding. And now it will pull out all the available features that I can code and unlock them for my Toyota. Well, Toyota doesn't have that many coding options. If you have German car, Volkswagen, Audi, BMW, you will have a lot more options. But not all models are supported. However, there really isn't a way how you can know if there will be coding for your model other than just plug in adapter, connect it and check for yourself. So for this Toyota, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight categories. And each category does have few of the options. For example, I was talking about power windows. If I go to power windows, I can allow or disallow opening and closing windows from my key fob and also by turning key in my door lock. Then you have these sounds and alarm, bunch of options here as well, or exterior lights, coming home function duration. You have bunch of interesting features that you could possibly enable or disable for your vehicle. These options I see here, they were put in my vehicle by Toyota when they were making this vehicle. So the Toyota decides what options you have and what your OBD scanner does, it just connects to your vehicle and you can select within those options. So if you are looking to get OBD up to diagnose faults, check your data, maybe monitor your fuel consumption, or even unlock new features for your vehicle, definitely download this Car Scanner Pro. And if you don't have adapter, OBD link and VPIC both are linked in the description.